The title of this topic is Traditional Computer Networks. What are the objectives of the topic? Let's see. After completing this topic, a student will be able to generally explain the concepts of enterprise network and the internet. The figures and the material in this topic, they have been adapted from our first textbook, which is that uh, computer, which is net computer networking, first step by Wendell Odom. Now we look at the traditional computer networks, different types of networks. Networks come in many shapes and sizes. The, in this topic, we will look at two well-known examples. The first one is an enterprise WAN, and the second is the internet. An enterprise WAN, let's imagine a company that has multiple physical sites with locations in separate states, separate provinces, and maybe separate countries. The human resource department, the human resources department is at the headquarters and let's say we are working at a small branch office. If we want to view our information about our benefits, I may, may want to fill out some forms to change something about my retirement plan investments and so on. What should we need if I'm located somewhere Far away from the headquarter, from the head office, I need a network. So the company needs a network. The network should be able to connect all sites of the big company located at multiple sites, which we call as an enterprise wide area network WAN. This is the conceptual view of a WAN. A larger network, which is representing an enterprise WAN, if you see this, we have shown three different branch offices and each branch office is running its own simple network. Then these three branch offices then are connected over this cloud. We call this, we have labeled this cloud as the telephone company, which is our wide area network. And then over this cloud, all these three branch offices, they are interlinked with, they are linked to this headquarters LAN where we have located multiple computers. So in this diagram, we have shown, we have shown an enterprise van, which uh, a company which is owning three different branch offices, which are located far away from each other. Each has uh, a few PCs, a printer maybe, right? The headquarters site has more users, more PCs, as well as servers. Each remote site consists of a simple network. The cloud label van is simply a part of the network over which the computers at each site can send and receive data from the computers connected to the simple networks at other remote sites. The above WAN is most commonly called an enterprise network because the network is owned and created by one company and a company can be considered to be an enterprise. Enterprise networks typically use WANs as part of the overall network. Now we come to the next commonly employed, uh, de deployed network, which is the inter internet. The I in the internet is capital and has significantly changed the way people live. It has flattened the earth and allowed free exchange of ideas worldwide among billions of people. The internet is a unique computer network. The uniqueness comes in that almost all enterprise networks connect to the internet. Also, individual users can connect to the internet. The internet works with the help of companies called internet service providers. Briefly, we call them ISPs. ISPs provide service to the companies and individuals to connect them to the internet. Almost all the computers on the planet can communicate with each other with the help of this internet. This is a diagram. In this diagram, we have depicted a couple of companies, company A, company B, which are the enterprise, uh, in different enterprises. Then we have also two, shown two individuals, Fred's home computer and Barney's home computer, and all of them can communicate over the internet. The cloud shown in the previous diagram that parts of a network exist, but the details are hidden. We are not interested in the details at the moment. The internet is so pervasive today that you can almost take it for granted. And that concludes this topic.